Hello, today I'm going to be measuring the efficiency of a LEGO Technic crane. So what does efficiency mean anyway? So the efficiency of a system is normally defined as the amount of energy or useful energy that comes out of the system compared to the energy that you put into it. So for example, if you've got a solar panel, um, you know, it gets energy from the sun and the amount of energy that's converted into power is defined as the efficiency. So for example, typically a solar panel is about 25% efficient. Um, which means that 25% of the sun's energy is actually converted to useful power. So in the case of a LEGO Technic crane, the efficiency is defined as the amount of work being done by the crane, which is lifting the weight, compared to the amount of power that is actually being put into the crane. So the setup I've got here is just one of the cranes that I've been demonstrating for a while in some of my previous videos. So what we've got here on the right is the power pack and what I've done here is actually modify it so to not use batteries and that's another video I've done recently and what that's allowed me to do is connect it directly to a 9 volt power supply and this is actually a lab power supply and then it also allows me to measure the current at the same time as measuring the voltage and the good thing about that is that you actually need the current to be able to measure the amount of input power going into the system. Uh, additionally, we've got uh, a small medium sized motor uh, powering the system, we've got the gearing and we've got the string and lifting basket at the bottom here. I've also got my um, calculation sheet that I've printed out, pretty much measuring all the parameters that we need to be able to calculate the efficiency of a crane. So for example, we need to know the weight that we're lifting, the distance that's being lifted, the time it takes to lift, uh, the input voltage and the input current. Now in order to calculate the amount of useful energy being produced by this crane we need to know the weight that is being lifted which we just know already by the amount of weight we're putting onto the hook as well as the distance is being lifted so I've put a ruler here on the side that will allow me to measure the distance and in order to work out the amount of energy being used we just need to multiply the force by the distance so that is the amount of work in terms of physics and uh, the amount of work is measured in joules of energy um, and it's just the uh, weight multiplied by the gravity constant 9.81 times the height that the weight has been lifted. Now in order to work out the amount of input energy into the system we just need to look at the power being supplied by the power supply. In order to work out the power, in case of, especially in the case of a DC supply, we simply multiply the voltage by the current uh, to work out the power being used. Now to work out the overall energy, you need to multiply that power by the amount of time over which the crane is operating to give us the energy that was put into the system. And then the overall efficiency is simply the ratio of the uh, output energy to the input energy, uh, which of course will be a number below 100%. So for our first measurement, I've loaded up the crane with a 1 kilogram weight. Now the overall weight on the hook being lifted will be about 1.3 kilograms with the basket weighs 300 grams. Um, so what I'm going to do is lift it up 10 centimeters, that's 0.1 of a meter using the, the ruler, and also measure the amount of time that takes to do that as well as measuring the current. Okay so I need to st uh, start the timer and the crane at the same time, it takes a little bit of coordination but here we go. Okay so that is measuring the time. Over here we've got the height, over here we've got the current, 0.11 amps. So we can pretty much stop at any time as long as we coordinate the stop. Do that now. Okay, and that gives us a measurement of a height of about uh, 12 centimetres. Started at 1 centimetre. We've got a time there of 13.76 seconds and we had a current of 0.11 of an amp. So we'll now write those down and work out the efficiency of this first test. Okay, I've written down those numbers and to work out the input energy into the system we just need to multiply out the voltage, which was 9 volts, by the current of 0.11 times the amount of time that that power was applied, which was 13.76 seconds. Which gives us a result of 13.6 joules, which I've written down the top of the sheet there. And then the output energy was um, the weight, which is 1.3 times 9.81 which is the gravitational constant of the earth multiplied by the distance of 0.12 so that gives us 1.53 joules of output and we divide that by the input energy 13.6 
gives us an efficiency of 11%, which is not a heck of a lot. Um, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Now, I was kind of surprised at the efficiency of just 11%. We're lifting 1.3 kilograms, so I was wondering if the efficiency would change with the amount of weight that we're lifting. So in this example here, I've loaded up the crane with 8 kilograms. So it's a total of 8.3. Um, and yeah, let's see how that measures up. So again, we'll start the timer. Okay, and we go, off we go. You can hear it's straining quite a bit more. The current's gone up dramatically from 0.11 of an amp to 0.47. Um, and it's taking much longer, but we'll stop it here. 20 seconds, just a distance of about 5 or 6 centimetres, and a current of 0.44. So let's work out those numbers. Okay, so the calculation for the 8.3 kilogram weight is that the um, input energy would have been the voltage which is 9 times the current 0.45 times the time of 20.95 seconds and it gives us an overall 81.6 joules of en energy going into the system and the useful weight lifting energy was the weight which is 8.3 times 9.81 gravitational constant of the earth times the distance that has been lifted 6 centimetres, so it's 4.88 joules we then divide that by the 81.6 gives an overall efficiency of just 6% wow look at that, so the efficiency has gone from 11% down to 6% lifting a heavier weight now you might wonder where does all this energy go because 6% uh, pretty much lost 94% of the energy well, some of it will be lost in the IR receiver, some will be lost in the motor, but probably the bulk of it will be lost in friction. So there's quite a lot of friction in the gears, especially once the weight is on the axle pulling down, it gets bent and that bending action uh, causes a lot of internal friction and that's probably one of the reasons why the efficiency for a much higher weight was a lot less because of the additional friction incurred due to the weight on the axles. After those initial results, you might think that the efficiency is simply a linear function of the weight, but um, I was a little bit surprised to see that the overall efficiency actually peaks at 15.9%. So as you increase the weight, the efficiency increases up to a peak, and then decreases down to 6% at the weight of 8.3. If you think it through, then obviously if you put a heavier and heavier weight, which I've done before, up to 10 kilograms, the motor completely stalls, in which case the efficiency at that point would simply be zero because it's not lifting um, any weight. Uh, and in fact the same thing happens when you put no weight on, when you're lifting no weight, uh, there's still a lot of energy being used, but there's no uh, efficient output energy. So pretty much at zero weight and maximum weight, the efficiency is in fact zero, and therefore you would expect a peak somewhere in between those two points. And finally, here's the results plotted on the graph. So again, as you can see, the um, efficiency starts at zero, at zero weight. It peaks at 15.1% at 3.3 uh, kilograms, and then it drops all the way to zero at maximum weight. Hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. Um, let me know if you can build a crane with a higher efficiency. Thank you.